All right, everybody, welcome back to the Steel City Blitz Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. We are very excited today to have a two-time Super Bowl winner uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers with us today, Mr. Ike Taylor. Uh, Ike, how are you doing, man? I'm good, fellas. How y'all doing? I am very good, and, and uh, with me is uh, Ian, one of my usual podcast hosts here. We do the weekly show here on Steel City Blitz, and um, uh, I'm just going to I'm gonna turn it over to him and let, let him get it started right now. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot for coming on, Ike. This is, a, this is a real pleasure for us. You were one of my dad and I's favorite players. We used to sit in the lower bowl of Heinz Field and do the Face Me Ike celebration all the time. You shut somebody down, so I'm really excited for this. Thanks a lot. Um, Man, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, actually, I bought my dad your jersey one year for Christmas, so he was he was rocking it pretty good. Um, so we just uh, wrapped up the NFL draft here. What's your favorite memory from back in 2003 when you were drafted? Getting drafted. You know, just playing cornerback for one year. I didn't know for sure if I was going to get drafted. So me actually getting drafted was like a blessing in disguise. So uh, I thought for sure I was going to be like a free agent. Um, I really want trying to get my hopes up, even though, you know, a couple of people and just hearing the agents and all that good stuff, um, I had to see it to believe it. And it, it, and a dream wound up coming true, just getting drafted. Yeah, that's that's great. So the Steelers just drafted a guy from your alma mater here. Um, have you had any contact with him or done anything to help him make the transition from Louisiana to Pittsburgh? No, nah, not yet, but I'm definitely going to talk to him. Um, probably before this week is over with, just what it is to be a stealer, just what the city provides for you, um, the history. Of course, uh, he's been a stealer fan all his life, him and his dad, so that makes it even easier. But um, for, for him, it's just a walk, you know, and the blueprints of being a stealer in that 412 area code. Like when when you came into the league, you you were in a, a draft with some pretty decent talent. Uh, one guy in particular named Troy Polamalu, uh, who's going into the Hall of Fame this year. Um, what what's I mean I know you've got a, a ton of them, but is there one or two specific memories of playing with Troy that that you could share with us? You just knew he was special from from day one. Mm-hmm. Like I I don't care. If you was a $30 million veteran guy, if you was a rookie free agent guy, when you saw Troy on the field, whether it was practice or whether it was in the game, you just automatically knew he was special. Like, Troy captured everybody's attention mm-hmm. from day one. From day one. So, one thing I do like about that football is, of course, I call it organized violence, but at the same time, <laughs> you see an alpha, you acknowledge the alpha, you recognize the alpha. And Troy was a, a alpha from, from day one. And the reason why he's going to the Hall of Fame because he's just a little bit different. So Troy is just unique. Um I was just I'm I'm fortunate enough to call him like my brother, my homeboy. Like right. Troy Troy Troy's more than just a you know, a teammate to me. So but at the same time, you know, just just watching the young man grow as a man, man. Like Troy, Troy's a year younger than me, but he he right. he made me grow as a man, as a person. But just watching Troy coming in from day one, now since we talking about it, like guys just had to respect who he was because they knew he was different. Was you mentioned he he's kind of an alpha? Was that in the way he carried himself? Because most fans look at Troy as a very soft spoken guy. How how do you mean that? Same as Dick LeBeau, like ah. Dick LeBeau and Troy, they 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 kind of the same personality. Don't say much, don't yell at all, but when they talk, they mean it. And if they're trying to discipline you, it hurt. So a lot of, a lot of when I say alpha, a lot of guys think physicality, rah rah money, mm-hmm. material things. They they think that might be alpha. For them two guys, that really they really go. Your word is everything, right? Between Dick LeBeau and Troy, your word is everything. I don't care what your status is. Your word is everything, and they 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 the old school. Shake my hand and look me in the eye, oh kind of guys. Yep. 
You know what I'm saying? So when I say alpha, it was like, you know, Dick Dick LeBeau got in my he, he chewed me out a few times and it was quiet, it was soft, but it it cut it, it cut me so clean like a chef knife. <laughs> It cut me so clean. Like, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, them two guys, they, they didn't do no yelling at all. But when they talked, everybody had to listen. Unreal. Speaking of guys that could command a room, you obviously had a very special re- relationship with Mr. Rooney. Can you talk about that for a minute? The same thing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm talking about three Hall of Famers, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm talking True. about the owner. He's a Hall of Famer. Paul Paul, a.k.a. Dan Rooney. I'm talking about Dick LeBeau, great living legend. Troy Palomalu, great living legend. Them three. When we, so now we're talking about Dan Rooney. Dan Rooney was just – he's a – he's a yinzer. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Rooney from Pittsburgh, the owner of – the Pittsburgh Steelers uh-huh. still staying in the same house. He stayed in the same house forever, forever, forever. House ain't changed. Um, and I told this story yesterday. Like, it's crazy, you know. We get money, and we think we made it, but the guy yeah. who signs your checks, my check, which was Mr. Dan Rooney at the time, he pulls up in a Buick LeSabre. <laughs> so, think about all the exotic cars he can have. Yeah. Everything he could have. But he pulls up in the Buick Lesabre. So, first thing come to mind between him and Troy, because honestly, between him, Troy, and Coach LeBeau, all of them, them three are far from materialistic. One, people person. Two, yeah. what they say they mean. Three, and they don't, they don't, they don't talk much. They don't yell. But when it when when they say something, man, you you under you you feel it, you know. Mm-hmm. You feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Paul Paul Rooney, he was just he grew up around. I mean, he grew up around the seventy dynasty. Yeah. Like Paul Paul yeah. Rooney, like just hear some of the stories she was telling me, like some of these. You know, some of these guys taught him math. You know, taught him advanced reading because he was on the road, and on the road back in the day was on the train. He was That's on the right. train with his dad for so long. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, he just grew up with. He just grew up with professional athletes all his life, so he just know how to talk to them. He, he know what to say. He know what ticks them off. He know what not to say. He he really was a a player's owner, so say. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. he, he, he just he – just, he appreciated what the players have done for him before he was an owner in his childhood years. Mm-hmm. So that's, yeah. that's, that's what made Paul Paul Rooney so different and so special. Like, I mean, when, you, when you're on the road 24-7 with dad yeah. and all you know is players – you, you you kind of feel like, and you play and you play football. Let's not forget, like yeah, that's true. Paul Paul Rooney was a football player. He he was quarterback. Quarterback, like yeah. legit. So, yeah. man, honestly, fellas, man, I'm just real for. I got I I had a down to earth owner. I had regardless on how people say, you know, Coach Coward, he did that. For face for TV. <laughs> I, I had a I had a down to earth and he he's a Yinzer. I had a down to earth coach and Coach Cowell. Then you mess around and give me another player's coach and Coach Tomlin. Then you mess around and give me a Hall of Fame defensive coordinator and my roommate, my best friend, my dog. He's a Hall of like man, I just been like I've been as a professional athlete, I just been fortunate, man. Like I, I, I really did. Then you put me in the city of Pittsburgh, like, and Coach Tom said all the time, like, man, y'all, y'all guys who want, you know, Lombardis, man, y'all got lifetime mm-hmm. scholarships, and it's so true. Yeah, yeah, it's so true. It's mm-hmm. so true. Like, the city of Pittsburgh just really embrace, you know, their players, and 
and you, you see it as soon as as soon as you get off the airplane. You, <laughs> you, I see it and I feel it. it yeah, you you sound very appreciative of it, and for me, it's refreshing because not everybody's like that. So I I know as a as a you know, lifelong Steeler fan. I know I appreciate it a ton. Um, uh, real quick about Dick LeBeau. Uh, has any man that age ever looked as healthy as he does? Nobody. I mean, it and is that's, incredible. That's Jesus. That's Jesus' cousin. <laughs> man, that man don't age. Man, that man don't age at all, huh? No, like, it's, a, it's incredible. Man, that's – and we call him Dickie. Like, Dickie, Dickie just – Dickie just – I mean, man, I wish I wish more people could be around Dickie. Just, I, I wish a lot of I wish a lot of people in the world can just he, he he's something different. He's right. very unique. He's Dickie. Dickie got he got a song out. He got albums out. He got CDs out. He can play the guitar. <laughs> he can play the piano. If you want to play cards with him, he'll smoke you. And he was a scratch golfer. Yes, he was. Yeah, and, very and he, cool. and he just so happened to be a Hall of Fame football player. Like Dicky did it all, man. Dicky, Dicky did it all, man. Dicky did it all, like <laughs> fellas. Like man, I'm, I mean, just roll the decks in my head on Dicky, like right. <laughs> everybody and I and I tell this story all the time. Like everybody had goals, individual goals. Mm -hmm. When you play for Dick LeBeau, another goal that you put up on your refrigerator or in your locker was not letting him down. Oh, I can imagine. That's 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 how much that's how much he meant to you. Yeah. So speaking of, of your playing days, one of the things that made you really special as a cornerback was your ability to switch sides and follow the other team's top receiver all over the field. Um, and a lot of corners these days can't do that. Um, was there anything different from a technique standpoint that you had to adjust going from like the right side to the left side as you followed guys around the field? Nah, you just the reason why I did it, cause I felt like I was one of the best for for a good little span. One, other mm -hmm. than catching the ball. Two, uh, that meant everything to me when Coach Lebo or my DB coach, you know, Ike, you got so and so this week. So go ahead and get your tape. Um, go ahead and watch the tape. This is what you got. Like that, that 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 was a prideful moment for me, and not everybody can do it. And it's hard. It's it's hard. yeah. It could, it could be a short. If you're not good at what you do, it could be a short career. Yeah. Very short. Very short. Lucky enough for me, I was just fortunate enough to figure everything out. I knew the whole defense. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly what the offense was doing, and I studied my and I respected my opponents but I studied my offensive coordinators even more because that dictated to how I was playing and what they was calling. So through all the attributes and the A.J. Greens, the Randy Moss, the Steve Smith seniors, and, mm -hmm. and all, these young, all these great guys I went against, I studied the offensive coordinator because the offensive coordinator is still calling the plays into the quarterback. Very true. Yeah. I just had to understand what extra, what special they brought to the table. Once I dissected that, I was like, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. So I, I always, you know, it's I tell people all the time, like, y'all can say what y'all want to say about Ike Taylor, but um having a job, period, for twelve years is hard. Let alone a professional athlete in the league for twelve years is even hard. Especially when you have to go against the other team's top receivers every week, week in and week out. It's, it's, yeah, it's fantastic. Just out of sheer curiosity, you obviously went a bun against a bunch of great receivers in your day. Is there anyone playing in today's NFL that you'd like the chance to go against? Now, I tell people all the time, and for Antonio Brown, yeah. for <laughs> Antonio Brown was AB. Right. Um, he, he, he made my games. I'm not going to say easy because I don't want to be disrespectful to nobody. He practice, – practice was harder than the games. i say that. Yeah, I don't doubt it. When, when A.B. – when A.B. wasn't – when A.B. wasn't A.B. and 
he was just doing like the special teams and we still at the time had Mike Wallace and Emmanuel Sanders when 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 he wasn't that guy. And I went against A B in practice. When I got in the games, I'm like, okay, we really do got something special sitting over there, Antonio Brown, because <laughs> because this 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 ain't too bad in the game. <laughs> this ain't too bad in the game. Like right. he he gives me everything I'm looking for in practice. You know, so <laughs> practice for me, practice for me was like a game. That's that's been kind of an old. I don't want to say too old, but I know it's been around for a long time. That when when your practices are harder than the games, that's kind of the goal. And and I would assume that that when AB stepped on the practice field, whether in Latrobe or or, or or at the practice facility, uh, you you knew you had to strap it up that day, huh? Yeah, he knew what you was getting. Like you 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 knew the dude. That's I mean, you knew the dude was special because I mean, look at the two I just named. Mike Wallace, Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. So yeah. Emmanuel Sanders still playing. Mike Wallace just got done. Like, and that's one thing. And I was talking to my cousin about this. I don't care. I don't care. That's one thing Pittsburgh does well. And I don't know how they do it or where they yeah. find them. But you want to talk about drafting wide receivers? <laughs> Man, they percentile in drafting – Wide receivers is far none. They've had a pretty good like, run, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, you 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 can't tell me a, a, a better front office who can find and get and draft receivers. That's what and, and they've been doing this since the seventies. Yeah, since yeah. the seventies they've been doing this. It, it is a uh, an unusual knack that they have. Uh, Ike, uh, before we let you go, I, I'm definitely curious the, about your, your new podcast that's coming. Uh, Believe in Steelers podcast It's going to be available on a number of different platforms. Uh, give us a little bit about what listeners can expect and, and you know, why you decided to, to start this up. Why not? You know, me and Mark Berger, that's, that's my co-host. You yep. know, him and I, we do the Believe in Steelers podcast. I mean – you know, I, I love football. I love I, I love the city of Pittsburgh. I love football. I like talking about football. So, you know, they came to me and I was like, man, why not? Like, <laughs> damn right. Like, let's 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 do it. Like, I, we ain't really got nothing to offer. I, right now, I'm not worrying about that. Mm-hmm. Right now, this is this is this is what I like. I, I like I like talking football, regardless on whether it's college, high school. NFL, of course, like this, like football, football, other than being a father, football is life for me, you know, so I'm in tune into everything, you know, and my son, he's, you know, he he, he was born in Pittsburgh, like, the, yeah, yeah, the man was born at McGee House, like, which he, he'll 412 baby, and he'll tell you, <laughs> 412 baby. Now, does that mean so, he's a Yenzer, too? Yeah, yeah. His, his his mom is from Weirden, West Virginia, so I'm I'm all the way country. Oh wow! Okay. So we 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 got some country ties, you know. But you know that's that's like Pittsburgh is home, man. That's that's my and my son is very prideful. He's very prideful of his dad and his accomplishments. You know, okay. growing up in the locker room with a James Harrison, a James Ferry, uh you know, Aaron Smith or Debo and Bussy, like, you know, it, it's, it's – the stage ain't too – because he plays football now. Uh-huh. The stage ain't too big for him. It's like, dang, like, when I was young, I didn't win the three Super Bowls. You know, so, like, so what So what y'all call pressure. Right. <laughs> you know, Damn. so, you know, it, it, it's – that's how he thinks. So he just carries – and at the time, you know, just that locker room, man, that, that was a brotherhood locker room. And that and that, and that stuck to my son. I can't that even locker imagine. room we had from 05 to 2012, that brother, my son, as, as a baby, because my son was number like three, four years old, he's, that, that's, that's what he talks about. Like, Dad, y'all were so close. I'm like, man, how the hell you remember? He was like, Dad, you just, fe- you just felt it. You ain't, you ain't, like, you felt it, Dad. I was like, wow. Like, okay. So, that it, it's official. Like, 
if you're saying you felt it, I can only imagine how other people saw it. Did, did he have one guy in that locker room that he kind of like, like just, just was magnetic towards it all? Was, was one guy oh, in Troy, particular? Troy was his. Yeah. Troy. I mean, yeah. He, he I, I just love him. I just love him with Troy. <laughs> and at the time, he wound up being a ball boy, you know, so he, he wound up being cool in training camp with a ball boy. Like he, he just, you know, he, he could do it all. But I, I, I teach him like, Work mm-hmm. ethic is everything. So, yeah. you know, if you if you come to work, you come to work. Well, why I gotta go? You gotta go with the ball boys. You know. So well, that's, I've just been real fortunate. That it, absolutely, and like I said earlier, it's it's great to hear how appreciative you are of of the organization you were with and all the people you, you came in contact with. It's, it's just awesome to hear. And um, again, it's, it's the believe uh, podcast. Um, it's at B L E A V podcast on Twitter. And uh, of course you can find it on just about every uh, podcast platform there is. And he's with Mark Bergen as well, a veteran NFL guy. Like we uh, wish you the best of luck with that. And uh, please feel free to drop by our show anytime and don't take too many of our listeners. Cause I got a feeling you're going to, uh, man, I appreciate the invite fellas. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, please uh, take care. And again, thanks for joining us. Okay. Likewise. Y'all stay safe. Take care. Okay. As well. Thanks, thanks so thanks. much. Thanks. No problem. All right, you've been listening to the Steel City Blitz Steelers podcast presented by Deck Roofing Incorporated, serving Broward County and the southern Palm Beach counties of Florida. Commercial, residential, multifamily, or condos, contact Deck Roofing today by visiting deckroofing.com. Uh, Ian, uh, <laughs> I'll let the listeners judge for themselves, but I thought Ike was fantastic. Um, I, I mean, he, he just uh, – I, I don't know that I've ever heard a guy so appreciative of the situation he found himself into. And, he, you know, he talked about how he, he thought for a while he would just be a free agent and gets drafted, finds his way into Pittsburgh, and, and I, I love hearing that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, it's great to hear those kind of stories. And, um, and, and he was right, especially coming out of, um, you know, Louisiana Lafayette, he played corner for one year, but he put up a blistering 40 time. Um, yeah. and that, that really helped him get drafted and, and he was really raw and he's, he's right that, you know, he, he really worked hard and developed and, um, I, I thought his uh, comments about studying the opposing offensive coordinators was, was really something because that's something that not a lot of people think of these days. Um, you know, and, and really a lot of people don't think necessarily of defenders is really, um, you know, watching, watching tape or studying a whole lot. And, you know, Ike was one of those guys that obviously watched a lot of tape and studied not only the receivers he was going to go against, but the whole offensive scheme that, that he was taking on as well. Um, and that obviously, you know, really benefited him on Sundays. I remember Denver's Chris Harris saying a few years ago that interceptions don't happen on Sundays. They happen on Tuesdays when you watch film and, okay. you know, True. Ike, I, uh, in fairness, you know, Ike referenced it himself that, you know, he was kind of known as a guy that um, didn't have the best hands, but at the same time, you know, he was able to make a lot of plays. He made a lot of pass breakups throughout his career and just blanketed guys. I mean, just watching him shut down, uh, you know, Chad Johnson over and over and over again. um, That's kind of where the whole face me Ike thing came from was that, you know, Chad Johnson was spouting off at the mouth about, you know, Ike's afraid to face me. He won't Mm -hmm. face me. And then Ike just shut him down for a whole game and did the whole face me Ike celebration every time they tried to throw the ball at at Johnson or Ocho Cinco or Ocho Stinko as he became. Um, But nevertheless, (laughs) that was, uh, that that was one of my favorite guys to watch him go against. He went against everybody, but um, you know, I think watching him shut down Chad Johnson over and over and over again was probably my favorite Ike too. You know, and and I'll be honest with you. I, I, I was probably as close to crying when he made that interception in Super Bowl 40 uh, as as any other point in watching football, Steelers football. I mean, I, I felt so good for him. Uh, oh yeah, and that was a huge play. I mean, that was right down there. Oh, the, I, I know that, that. That's what I mean. I mean, it's just it, it's like you see who the ball's going towards, and, and you get that immediate feeling like it's Ike. Oh, geez, you know, and and he and he gets it. 
and you're just, I, I was just so overwhelmed because you knew how hard the guy works. And, um, you know, I know you've been to the Trope too. And, and a lot of the guys, especially the DBs, they'll go over on their own and they'll run that hill um, after practice, before, whenever they do it. And man, you want to talk about some guys that work hard. And so we, we knew how hard he worked and it was just, it was so awesome to see him make that play. And, um, but I, I'm just, I, he'll do fine on this podcast. He's he, he, like, he said, he loves talking football. Um, and he, he probably could have gone forever with us today. I had the feeling he wanted to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, due to, due to time constraints, but, um, yeah, it was, it was great. And, and I, and I don't know how much time you have, but, um, in, in just a minute or two here, wrap up the rest of the Steelers draft. You know, we talked already about uh, Claypool and um, Highsmith and, and, and just a couple of thoughts on, on the last uh, several picks the Steelers made on day three. Yeah. So my, my overall takeaway with this whole class is they took players at positions they needed to address. You know, we talked on the podcast a lot before the draft about how mm -hmm. they had a lot of positions where they didn't necessarily need starters, but they needed depth and they addressed depth at all those positions. I think out in the Twitter sphere and talk radio and all that, the common sort of commentary is going to be, well, they took the right positions, but in the wrong spots. Well, yeah. this was a, a historic draft for wide receivers, right? A lot of years you don't see 10 wide receivers go in the first hundred picks. And we took Claypool as the 13th wide receiver taken, or was he 11, 11th or 13th, somewhere around there, but at the 49th overall pick. Um, so, I mean, this was a historic draft that, that wide receivers got taken um, really high and really fast in. Um, a lot of people wanted J.K. Dobbins out of Ohio State, which is understandable. I could yep. totally see the logic there. Um, but nevertheless, they still addressed the running back position with a guy who's got speed to burn. I mean, uh, McFarlane can absolutely fly. So they – they only had six picks coming in. So there wasn't a lot of ability that they had to move around in the draft. Everyone's hailing Baltimore as having such a good draft. Baltimore had six picks in the first three rounds. Three rounds. Yeah. And we had six total in the whole draft. So, you know, when Baltimore's making their sixth selection around the time we're making our second, yeah, they're going to get a lot of really good players and we're, not going to get as many. Um, but I thought for, you know, for the picks they had, for the guys that were available, they addressed the positions they needed. And fortunately, we don't need any starters this year. We kind of just need depth all around. And mm -hmm. they got that. And we'll see how these guys develop. It's, you know, getting getting them in here, getting them to learn the playbook, getting them to see how, how they work, how they um, – assimilate into the atmosphere of the locker room and we'll go from there seems like they got a lot of a lot of high character guys too um you know guys who were leaders on their teams um i heard an interview with uh brian kelly the coach from notre dame yeah, talking about yeah. how hard claypool had worked the last few years just to improve his game and how how good of a player he became in practice and how that translated over onto the field so um a, a lot of good signs a lot of upside um I don't know if I'd expect a lot from this class other than special teams play and maybe a couple, mm -hmm. couple offensive touchdowns out of Claypool and McFarland in the first year, but um, there's a lot of long-term upside here too. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I, as we know, we, we've covered this stuff long enough. Uh, you're not going to hit on every single pick and you're, you're very seldom going to fail on every single pick. So, um, you know, some of these guys I, I think will be Steelers for a while and, and some won't. That's just the law of averages when it comes to the NFL draft and uh, who those guys are is going to depend on their, their own particular situations and uh, choices they make on and off the field and, and so on and so forth. But I, I do, I, I like it overall. I, I mean, it, it was an incredibly unique draft with the number of wide receivers there were and um, a lot of other factors that went into this. So I, I I'm fine with it. Uh, again, my own personal uh, policy is I, I don't get into grading these things. I, I want to see these guys play in the black and gold, and then I'll start to formulate those things first because, you know, as, as an example, um, Antoine Brooks is he, – he's listed as a safety, but I honestly don't know how often we're going to see him in safety. I mean, I, I think he's going to be more of a hybrid guy, linebacker type safety too. So, you know, l let's just see kind of where things fall in there. But, um, uh, Ian, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. And, uh, again, thank you to uh, Ike Taylor, uh, two-time Super Bowl champion with the Steelers, for, for joining us. And, again, check out his Believe in Steelers podcast available wherever you find podcasts. So for Ian, this is Steel Dad signing off on the Steel City Blitz Steelers podcast presented 
by Deck Roofing Incorporated of South Florida. And hey, go Steelers. <laughs>